Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and today I want to talk to you about Luna. Uh, Luna is a two to four player board game. It is now carried in the States by Tasty Minstrel Games. Previously, it was a Z-Man and Pegasus Spiel game and Hollow Games, and it's been through a few different hands, but it's still an excellent, amazing game from Stefan Feld. Might happen to be my favorite designer. So for Luna, the idea is an action selection game in which you are trying to go from island to island, um, praying and building temples and um, sending your little guys off to school. And in the middle of the board, there's going to be a little temple that you're trying to stay present in. So you're studying and learning and uh, positioning yourself on the council and everything is victory points. What is really unique about the game in so many things, but one of the best parts about the game is that the round timer, um, instead of taking a regular action in a turn, you can pass. And as soon as four people or four actions have been taken to pass in the turn, the round is over. Now the game itself can go really quick if everyone's just passing all the time and not allowing anyone to build up points, or it can be pretty loosey-goosey and wild and you're being able to take all of the actions you would ever want and be able to position your guys just so before anyone starts putting out these little candles to end the round. So it's very much down to your table and your behaviors of how long the game might last, but I would say on average it is about a 90 minute game. So. Uh, the components themselves are pretty standard fare for something like Pegasus Spiel or Themeon or Tasty Minstrel. Um, really nice, decent cardboard and lots and lots of wooden meeples. There's not much else to it, but there is some really lovely art. So you are kind of um, praying to this moon priestess and she's this little paper standy and she's walking around the different islands, but everything is kind of blue and green and purpley and it's very much my aesthetic, so I found the game to be absolutely stunning gorgeous. So that's all the kind of what about the game, what about the game game? Uh, let's talk about the action selection. So at the beginning of the game, everyone is going to start with a couple of their guys um, out on the boards, so they're an island surrounding the, the temple. And each island has its own little aspect. It might help you in future actions move your guys around. It might help you pay for costs. It might help you uh, reset some guys or move them around or get them out of the temple. Uh, so at the beginning of the game, you kind of draft where you're going to start and where you're going to put a shrine. Um, shrines are victory points at the end of the game, as well as giving you some small benefits during the game. At for an action during a turn, most of what you're going to be doing is taking meeples off of an island to do a thing. So there's this really weird aspect where every time you'd like to take an action, these guys that are sitting on an island are going to jump into the water in front of the island, right? That's how you signify that you've used those meeples. Once they're in the water, they can kind of move around, but they're no longer like an act active meeple. Trying to determine what order you need to take your actions in and prioritizing your actions in the game is really important because you never know quite when the round is going to end, especially in four players where all you need is four people to pass. Uh, you can be setting yourself up for an epic, let's move everything around and get all of the points and the round's over too fast and you haven't really positioned yourself well. So your prioritization needs to be both in what board state you're at and where you're comfortable if the round were to end next turn and trying to get the most bang for your buck out of all your actions. Um, each island has that little ability and so maybe if I jump off the island I get a little token that would let me move all my meeples around, a big tidal wave. Um, another one might make it where I have to pay one less as a cost, one might make it where I could build a shrine if I'm near the architect. And so um, there's a lot going on and you really need to be able to figure out at what point you're comfortable at the round ends and get to that point as quick as possible. Uh, there is a moon priestess, bad guy, I can't remember his name, and an architect and they're going to be walking the islands during the game. So they're all going to start in different ones and the moon priestess moves a certain number of spaces clockwise every turn the construction guy moves five spaces every turn and the bad guy will walk until the next time he meets up with meeples because at the end of every round if you have the most meeples with the moon goddess you get points or second most if you are with the architect you have the ability to build shrines if you've set yourself up properly during the round um, 
And at the end of the round, there's also negative points for, for being next to the bad guy. Um, and this makes it where you really want to use the ability of wherever that bad guy is, but you have to be able to get your meeples out, you know, like by the end of the round. Otherwise, they're straight across um, every meeple you have there as a negative point. So it's not, it's not good to be where that guy is, but you can move them around too during the, during the round. Um, the timer, like I said, you pass, you don't take an action, and then you just take one of these little candles and you throw it out a window. <laughs> The, the graphic design is kind of funny. Your, your meeples jump from the island into the water and the candles were inside this little like church and in order to snuff them they kind of walk out of the, the, the window so it just looks like you're tossing candles. <laughs> I always thought that was fun but uh, especially in the two player um, my most brutal game of this came when uh, I was setting myself up for big points and lots of building and doing cool stuff. Brian put three guys into the temple early, which is more victory points than if you were to put them in later. And then he just starts passing every turn for the rest of the game, and I'm desperately trying to catch up with the points that he made off of those three plays. So the round being able to be over really quickly is a concern you must be aware of. Um, the temple works a lot like the stands in La Granja. That's where they got that one from, guys. Uh, so. For a turn, you can jump off the island to jump onto one of these pieces around the temple. And later as an action, that piece from outside the temple can jump into the temple. You get a number of victory points. If it's early in the game, you get more victory points than toward the end. And if you jump in there with a higher number than any of the guys surrounding you, you'd kick them out as well. And you get points for kicking guys out. You get points for being in there round over round. So there's kind of like an upkeep of points. Uh, that temple works really well. It's a ton of points. It's way, way harder to maintain than the rest of the game's points uh, because you really want to keep your guys safe. So you have to take actions to move these like protective books under you. Um, the temple, also those few points that you get as an upkeep are really important. The, the game doesn't have that many points in it anyway. So any way you can get a few points per round is good. Uh, it gets very kingmaker almost feeling but it's it's hard to know who is winning while the game is going it's not a score track you just have point chits so you have to be kind of good at naturally intuiting who is doing well at the table in order to know who to um target in the temple which people find can be a problem um hidden trackable information can be its own blog probably but i don't have that much trouble kind of knowing who's doing well and who's not it's pretty obvious in the game for me um, so that's one of the big points of interaction in the game. People do call the game a little less interactive than they'd like. I think that the interaction in the temple is where a lot of those decisions come in. Um, who you need to target, who you don't, where you want to build, who's likely to build into there next to you. You can see the numbers are all kind of spread out based on the number of players. You kind of flip over boards, but um, you can see what's possible, what's coming up, who has a good position to get into that temple. But every time you use those meeples, instead of using them for actions, jumping off the islands, you use them into the temple, you really have to replace that so you don't run out of action sooner than everyone else. Um, each meeple basically you can find more of them until you get up to your maximum, but every time you put one in the temple, it's another one you can't use on the islands. And it, it moves pretty far from the islands to the temple. If you get kicked out of the temple, you only get kicked off to like the dock, and then you have to kind of sweep them up with a tidal wave or a boat later on to be able to use them again. So there are big sacrifices in going temple heavy, but it can be very, very rewarding. Uh, so the feel of the game is a bit contentious. It's definitely one of the more mean felds that there are. Um, it's similar to all the blocking you can do in Trajan. It feels similar. Uh, to compare it to other games is really difficult though. I've been asked a lot, what, what game is Luna like? Will I like it? And it's, it's hard to say. Do you like kind of optimizing and prioritizing? Do you like rounds that aren't necessarily three actions long? Do you Are you okay with kind of a looser nature of the game? It is, at four players, my favorite felt. So for me, it's totally worth it. Um, it means a lot of cool decisions have to be made before you start a round. You have to know 
you have to know the quickest path to the most points in the round and then kind of pick up extra points as you go as long as you can squeeze out those extra actions. There's also something to be said to be the person ending the round early because you got your points and got out and you start throwing the candle. Every once in a while you can kind of get other people on your side and have them help end the round with you and that's really important and fun and <laughs> it really makes whomever's winning really upset if you're trying to get back at them. Um, if there was anything I could change in the game, uh, it would probably be the actual physical components are a little hard to fit together. So there's a temple and it's kind of these puzzle pieces that if you don't put the center parts in first and then build the frame around it, it doesn't like to fit together. It wants to buckle. Uh, for gameplay though, I do think I like it at four players and three players, I like it just as it is. The two player, I don't know what would help, but I do think that it's a little too one-sided in two player. I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not playing it enough at two player to get real good at it, but I have found that either myself or Brian decisively wins the two player, and I, I would prefer more of a struggle. Um, this is a currently available game. The majority of the talking about Luna happened a long time ago, and so I really thought that highlighting it now might be a good thing for all of us, and so I could get more people to play it. Um, if ever you want, Luna is also available on yukata.de. It is a pretty good implementation. It's a little hard to play asynchronously, so I would suggest if you have an afternoon off trying to get people in to play it with a nice timing. I know I'm good. I know I'm guilty of that as I am horrible at remembering in online games unless I'm at work at the time. So I would recommend the Yukata implementation, but to play it more often than I do. <laughs> so that's all for me for now, and I hope to see y'all later. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate your time and effort here. Uh, I have recently launched a Patreon campaign, so you can reach me at patreon.com slash maggiebot to help support me and what I do. Uh, right now we are up to two videos a month guaranteed and we are working our way toward more. Uh, join me there in an amazing community. We'll be doing cool hangouts on Sunday mornings. And I really appreciate and love you all. Thank you. Bye.